Today I'll be talking about how to use rosemary oil for extreme hair growth. Now I have a bunch of videos all about growing your hair with rosemary oil and there's so many videos about rosemary oil all over YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, but no matter how many videos I post or no matter how many other videos I see, there's always so many questions. So this is not going to be a video on how to make your rosemary oil or where you can buy it. I will link some options in the description box below and I'll link the video on how to make it at the end of of this video but this is to answer every single question that you have about rosemary oil so if you have a question wait till the end of this video and if you still have a question we can do a part two I will answer your questions from whatever additional questions you have in the comment section below so if you don't know me my name is Angelica I post hair growth videos twice a week every single week and on Sundays I post something a little different so if that seems interesting to you consider subscribing the subscription button is right down there as well as the bell icon make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications every single time I post so the first question about rosemary oil for extreme hair growth can I put pure rosemary oil on my scalp Simple answer, no. You cannot put pure rosemary oil on your scalp. The reason why you can't use pure essential oils directly on your scalp is because they have negative side effects. They can cause serious issues like burns, especially if you use one of those essential oils that's like tingly, like peppermint or tea tree. Rosemary is also tingly, but it's not as tingly as peppermint oil. But just because it doesn't feel tingly, like if you use something like lavender oil, it's actually supposed to be very calming. So it feels like nothing on your scalp. You can't even really feel it being oily because it's so thin and light. But the thing is, you will get side effects. And just because you don't get them right now, doesn't mean you can't get the side effects later. It can even affect your health. Essential oils should always be diluted. Carrier oils can be used on their own. So now just to clarify for this specific one, I've seen some people comment this under my videos. So this is rosemary essential oil. Essential oils are usually in tiny bottles because you really don't need that much unless you use it a lot. So just because it comes in a bottle like this and you're like, oh, it's a lot of oil and it comes with a dropper, which means I can directly drop it onto my scalp like skincare. No, you cannot. This is a pure essential oil. And the easiest way to tell in case you get confused like, well, the packaging looks the same. How will I know if it's an essential oil or not? Just look at the back go to the ingredients and at the ingredients they should only be one ingredient but i get questions or comments when i post myself using maya organics rosemary mint oil and people will say you're not supposed to use that directly on your scalp you're supposed to mix it actually no because if you look at the ingredients right at the bottom there this is the ingredients list okay Rosemary oil is not even in the top five oils because it's an essential oil. You don't need that much. So this is an already made mix. If it was meant for mixing, it would have been written on the packaging. This says for daily use, scalp treatment, split and care. So even though these two look similar and they both look like essential oils, especially because this just says rosemary mint, you have to look at the back. If there's more than one ingredient, especially if one of those are carrier oils or just other ingredients, then you know that it is an oil mix. You can use this directly on your scalp. You can't use this directly on your scalp. Hopefully that's clear. Do I have to mix it with other essential oils? And this question comes up a lot because I like to make my own oil mixes. And usually in my oil mix, it's something like castor oil, camellia oil, then peppermint oil, tea tree oil, rosemary oil, and maybe lavender oil all mixed together. So it's like, do you have to do that? No. Rosemary oil is extremely effective all by itself. You don't have to mix it with any essential oils, but you can. For me, it's just a personal choice, but always diluted in at least one carrier oil of your choice. They are thicker with a higher water content. So we're talking about avocado oil, castor oil, coconut oil, jojoba oil, macadamia nut oil, avocado oil, I don't know if I already said that, camellia oil, all those are carrier oils. And if you ever get confused, again, just look at the instructions. If you're buying a correct oil from a trusted site, it should say, like this is my rosemary oil that I get from Amazon, and it does say, carefully dilute with a carrier oil. The next question is surprisingly common, but apparently a lot of men watch my rosemary oil videos, and a lot of questions I get are, can I use this if I am a man? 
Absolutely. You can use this oil on a man and most of studies that are done when it comes to hair loss, hair regrowth, including rosemary oil, most of these studies are done on men. Very few of them are done on women and that's because usually the studies are done when it comes to people fighting male pattern baldness or some form of alopecia and so that's basically the best way to test if something actually works or not. So because these were tested on men, you can absolutely use this if you are a man. How long is it going to take for me to see results? Now I'm going to be real with you here. This is not a magical product. Rosemary is not going to grow your hair overnight. Now, your genetics will play a role. How fast your hair naturally grows is going to influence how quick you see results. In two to three weeks, you might be able to see a small enough change, but to see if this actually works and if it's really helping your hair, just like most of the tests that have been done, even on things that are scientifically proven like LED light therapy, minoxidil, you need to use it for a solid three to six months to see if it actually is making a major change to your hair. And just remember, if three to six months sounds like it's too long, three to six months is going to pass anyway. So you might as well. Is rosemary oil suitable for all hair types? Yes, it is. I've seen a lot of drama when it comes to this. And I think this is specifically because of the brand and people think like, oh, it's a sellout. And this is definitely a brand that was targeted towards African Americans, black people, black hair, thick curly hair, but this is like medium density. So if you have extremely fine and thin hair and you use a lot of this all over your scalp, it's going to weigh your hair down. It's going to make your hair look heavy. It may even lead to breakage if you put too much of it in your hair. However, the rosemary essential oil or any other oil that contains rosemary can be used by anyone. You just need to figure out the density and the right amount to use for your specific hair type. You can use it if you have long hair, short hair, curly hair, straight hair, men, women, whatever your hair type is, rosemary oil will work for you. Of course, if your hair likes it, let me just throw that out there. Nothing works for everyone. People love aloe vera juice. I can't stand the texture. People love coconut oil. My hair hates coconut oil. If it works, it'll probably work well, but if it doesn't work, find something else. Can this be used on relaxed hair or chemically treated hair or bleached hair? Yes. This is included in the all hair types. You can use it whether your hair is relaxed, whether it is bleached, whether you have a keratin treatment, whether you have a perm, whether you have dye, especially because rosemary oil is used on the scalp. Sure, there are oils that use it like on the actual hair shaft, but most of the time you're using it on your scalp where there's fresh follicles. You most likely will not see any kind of damage unless you did some kind of treatment and your stylist specifically told you not to use rosemary oil or maybe any oil on your scalp you can use it on your hair. Will it darken my hair? This seems to be a worry for a lot of people. Unless you're using an oil that actually has a dark tint to it, it will not darken your hair. The thing about rosemary oil is if you research and you see the scientific things behind it, it says something about making your hair darker. It's not in reference to changing the color of your hair. It's more in reference to bringing out richer version of your hair. It will not change the color of your hair. So I don't know if my hair looks black on camera, but it's not. Let me try getting a little up close. So I don't know if you can tell. My hair is brown, <laughs> maybe what people would call a mousy brown. It's actually very annoying because I think darker hair looks much healthier. But anyway, I do not have black hair. My mom has like pitch, like number one B black hair. When I use a lot of rosemary oil and I start to see that my hair is looking richer and darker, it doesn't look like it's turning black. It just looks like a richer version of my own color. So if you are a natural blonde, think about what your hair looked like when it was at its healthiest. You know when your hair starts to get like damaged and it starts to get this like sort of gray damaged hue, like it just looks like there's something off about it. The rosemary oil can help it just grow out with a nice more fuller, brighter, healthier look. It will not turn your hair dark. If you're a natural blonde, it's not going to make you start growing brown hair because that's impossible unless you're using a hair dye, okay? So also this works in the same way if you have any kind of premature graying, this can help with sort of reversing that. Now if you're graying on time and it's a genetic thing, 
that's a different thing. You may not have as much luck, but if it's premature graying or graying due to stress or something like that, this can help you grow back your natural color of the hair. It's not going to actually change the color of your hair. Also, if you bleach your hair and you're worried about this changing the color of your hair to make the bleached hair go back to your natural color, that again is impossible because when you bleach your hair, you literally strip out all the color from the core of your hair shaft. It is impossible to make the color start growing back. However, the hair that's growing at your roots that has no bleach on it will of course grow back with its natural richer color. How long can I leave it in my hair? This depends on where you applied it and how you applied it. If you applied it all over your scalp and you used a thicker oil mix, like maybe even this which was, which is kind of like medium, if you have more fine hair and you used quite a lot of this, you may need to wash it out in the same day. But if you use very little, I would suggest a minimum of 20 minutes under heat or minimum one hour to four hours if you don't like the oily feeling if you feel like leaving oil in your hair for too long makes it shed more or makes it frizzy or makes your hair too oily whatever around four hours would be the minimum and then the maximum again like i said like leaving it in your hair for a week if you're using very little of it is fine my best advice here would just be for you to try out different lengths of time to leave it in your hair and see which one your hair likes best and do that it doesn't matter if i can leave it in my hair for a week if it makes your hair feel greasy or dirty after two days you're gonna have to wash it out after two days so this one is a personal thing now this question has to do with if you make the rosemary oil yourself and this is can I use fresh rosemary if I don't have dry rosemary or the other way around? The answer is yes, you can use both. However, there is one thing. When it comes to dry rosemary, I find that it's not as potent as when I use fresh rosemary, but dry rosemary has a very long shelf life. Of course, if you leave it in a humid environment and you leave it in a really hot place, it could possibly go bad. But in most cases, I can keep my rosemary oil for months when I use dry rosemary. When I use fresh rosemary, usually it's a maximum of one month. So when I use fresh rosemary to make my oil mix, I make a very small batch because I know I'm going to finish it quickly. So just think about that. Can I use it on my eyelashes and my eyebrows? You can use it on your eyebrows for sure. I actually use an oil mix. It's, it's castor oil, avocado oil, and rosemary oil. I use that on my eyebrows. My brows just look better. Like the brow hairs look healthier from the beginning to the end. It makes my brows softer so I can style them without having to use like a bunch of gels and whatever to make them lay the way I want to. So it just makes my brows feel really nice and conditioned. But I did notice the most difference when I actually needed to use it, which is when I had a little a little hint of the Rona and I lost like a patch of eyebrows. It was like, which brow was it? I'm pretty sure it was this brow. There was like a whole circle here missing of brow hairs. And when I used that brow serum that I made with the oils, it grew my brows back so much faster than usual. I've been using castor oil and avocado oil mixed together and that's all I use on my lashes. I don't use any essential oil. And if you want to try essential oils, I would suggest you buy a product that is already formulated with the essential oils in the serum in the right concentration in a way that wouldn't irritate your eyes. And even then, it probably still could irritate your eyes. So eyelashes, no. Eyebrows, yes. Should I continue using it if it makes my scalp itchy? Well, is it tingly or is it itchy? Find the difference because the tingly sensation is normal. Rosemary oil does do that. But if it's making it like itchy and feeling weird, first of all, try and reduce the dose. Maybe you use too much rosemary oil. But second of all, do a patch test on your arm, probably not somewhere where people can see, maybe somewhere near your elbow or on the inside of your arm. Use just a slightly heavier concentration of the rosemary oil mixed with something and see if it makes your skin feel itchy or if you break out in a little rash or something. Because if that happens, you might be allergic, you might just need to stop using it and find something else. Can I use rosemary oil to regrow my hairline? This is kind of like what I was talking about on the eyebrows. How bad is your damage? Are your follicles dead? Are they damaged? or what's the situation is it alopecia because if your follicles are dead there's nothing you can use even minoxidil 
will not make your hair grow back if your follicles are dead. But if your follicles are still alive, it can absolutely help grow your hairline back. If they have severe damage, you might want to look into PRP or LED light therapy. And if they are completely dead, you may want to look into something like a hair transplant. Because the fact is, rosemary is not a miracle product. There's no single topical miracle product that can revive a completely dead follicle. How can I use rosemary oil if I don't like the feeling of oil in my hair? Well, because it's an essential oil, it is very easy to mix into things. So I would suggest you mix this into your shampoo. I've shared this before. Most people should lather their hair twice. The first time you're kind of getting up the dirt and then the second time you're actually cleaning your hair. So in your last wash, the second time, maybe the third time if your hair was really dirty, put like two to three drops of rosemary essential oil in your shampoo, mix it in your palm, put it directly on your scalp, lather it on and let it sit for like two minutes and then just rinse it out and you have some of the benefits in your scalp directly when your hair is at its cleanest and you can still get the benefits that way. Is rosemary oil better than minoxidil? Well, rosemary oil has been compared to specifically a 2% minoxidil, not a 5% minoxidil. The thing that makes rosemary oil better is one, it is cheaper, two, you can get sort of similar results, and three, you have little to no side effects. Minoxidil works better in my opinion, especially the 5%, but you do get more side effects like if you use the topical spray, if it drips down your face, you may start to grow hair on the rest of your face, wherever it touches. Even if you wash your face and you didn't rinse off the minoxidil properly, you can start growing hair in places where the hair is supposed to be fine. Like you know where you have your natural peach fuzz, it can start growing in thicker. And also depending on how bad hair loss is, like I said for the hairline, if you can see that you still have hair follicles but you want to try something that will potentially grow your hair back thicker faster, try going for a minoxidil. But like I said, it just has more side effects. You may get more itching and other sort of irritation. But this is a medical grade product that you can buy from a pharmacy that has been proven multiple times to work. And if you have no issue with trying something that is not organic. What oils can I mix it with? And to be honest, for now, I haven't seen any oil that it doesn't mix well with, whether that's essential oils or carrier oils. You can mix it in multiple carrier oils, multiple essential oils, or both. In my opinion, it mixes well with every single oil very well, provided that the carrier oil percentage is way more than the essential oil percentage. If you want to see an example of how I mix rosemary with a bunch of other oils, you can watch this video right here. Hit my face right there to subscribe if you didn't in the beginning. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.